Today I'm going to talk about floating horse teeth, or also known as the procedure of horse dentistry. To begin with, we're going to do some background information. So horses' teeth continue to erupt for most of their life, so they're also known as hypsodonic teeth. As you can see, their teeth go all the way down into their jaw, and so as they continuously graze their roughages, they kind of wear them down. And so they continuously erupt so that their teeth don't disappear until they get in a lot older age. Uh, horses' teeth don't wear evenly when they eat, so they eat in a circular formation. And when this happens, like let's say a tooth falls out or um, they favor one side more than the other, they form hooks and points, which are sharp points on the teeth that a veterinarian goes in and smooths out. Horses are also unique because they develop wolf teeth, um, and they come in about five to 12 months year old, not year, 12 months year, oh goodness, and they're vestigial teeth. So they do not have any function anymore. It was from evolution when horses used to look like a little dog, and they kept them all through the time. So they're usually pulled to discomfort. Um, they still contain neurons and sensitive, uh, that are very sensitive. So when you ride a horse, you use a bit and a bridle to control it. So that usually clicks against the bit, and then it makes the horse angry and upset, and then the horse becomes dangerous to ride. Um, so veterinarians usually recommend annual dentistry work. Uh, so as I said, teeth affects how horses ride and how the bit fits in their mouth. So a horse could throw its head a lot. When you, if you're showing a horse, you definitely don't want that because you want it to be a nice, proper formation. And it also affects their body condition. So if a horse's teeth uh, start to get all messed up, they start losing weight and start getting sick. Also, another fun fact is there's laws pertaining to equine dentistry. Uh, each state varies. Some states allow veterinarians only to do the procedure of floating teeth. And in some states, a veterinarian technician can do floating teeth with the supervision of a veterinarian. And another fun fact is there's schools that teach people how to float horses' teeth. And I've seen on Facebook a vet tech, and she wasn't a vet tech or a DVM, and she was advertising that she can float your horse's teeth, which is illegal, and you can report it. But as I mentioned, I've interned with an equine veterinarian and they say it's not very on the top of police's priorities of catching those people. So what's Indiana law? What's, do you know? Um, only veterinarians are allowed. Oh, only veterinarians are allowed, okay. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do a step-by-step -step procedure on floating horses' teeth. I've interned at an equine-only veterinarian clinic, and this summer I shadowed with a uh, large animal veterinarian, and I saw about 500 of these procedures. So, um, so step one is a general physical exam by the veterinarian. Like I said before, you observe the body condition. So if a horse is nice and fat, like most owners keep their horses, uh, you can tell that maybe their teeth aren't awful, but they still need that yearly exam. And But if a horse is getting real old or if their body condition's getting a little thin, maybe there's the first thing you can start with is their teeth. Uh, step two is sedation. Uh, typical sedation is Tolazine or xylazine, which is given into the jugular vein on a horse's neck, makes them nice and sleepy and happy, so that when a horse, when a veterinarian is grinding away their teeth, they're not going crazy. But they're still standing. Yes, still standing. The standing procedure. Uh, step three is to put in the full mouth speculum. So as you can see in the top right corner, um, um, so the top right corner is a speculum. So it has a little nice cool, cool little plates that go over top the bottom and top incisors and then you can crank it open either by physical force which is really hard I've done it or you can do it with a tool and crank it open and that way the horse is unable to chomp or keep chomp down the veterinarian's arm which could harm the veterinarian or the horse itself um, it's kind of very simple to put on the horse it's just kind of like a bridle or a halter but you kind of, the horse is all sedated, so it kind of, the horse kind of easily takes the plates over top of its mouth. Step four is to wash out the mouth and restrain the head. Uh, the one veterinarian I used, she had a dental scan because she was a mobile veterinarian. 
Um, I know there's, so you just kind of have the vet tech hold the horse's head onto the stand that has a nice cushion, the horse is comfortable. The vet tech puts a hand behind the ear and on the bridge of the nose um, and just hold the horse's head onto it. And if the horse gets spooked or something, it can easily back up and we can easily put the horse's head, we can move the stand to the horse and easily put it back in. Um, another veterinarian I worked with, uh, he used a, another giant, a bigger bridle or halter um, like thing that went over top the speculum and he tied a rope to it and then tied a rope over top of a metal pole that came out of the stockade. And I've also heard very scary stories about veterinarians using ropes over tree branches. Um, if a horse spooks, you don't know what that horse is gonna do. So restraining the horse by that kind of technique could be possibly dangerous. Uh, step five is a visual examination of a mouth. So a veterinarian usually uses like a little nice uh, headlamp and she can look back and he or she can look back in there and see what the teeth condition are. I'm going to show there's three typical teeth problems, which is the step mouth on, on the left. Uh, as you can see, like if teeth go missing, then uh, those teeth on the farther back that are longer in the back, those don't have anything to grind against. So they usually tend to be longer, but the teeth towards the front have something to grind against, so then it comes uneven. The next one is the wave mouth, which I saw, got to see over the summer, and that's literally a wave formation in the mouth. And the next one is sheer mouth, which is the insides are shorter and then the outside of the teeth are longer. And those are sharp. Yes. <laughs> that, causes... That's scary, that right picture on the left side. And <laughs> Stuff like this causes ulcers in the mouth, infections in the mouth, the horse loses body condition, all sorts of bad things. Uh, continuing with the procedure, step six is performing the dental procedure. Uh, there's a variety of tools to use on this procedure. Some veterinarians use power tools, some use rasps. There's also extracting tools for broken teeth um, and also wolf teeth extractors. We'll get talk about that in a second. Um, so some veterinarians uh, disagree with power and some dis disagree with RASP. So RASP are in this photo, they're just like big files, and that's all manual labor. So some veterinarians don't like power tools because you can't feel what that power tool's doing, it's just going. And some veterinarians don't like manual tools because sometimes you don't grind down fast enough or long enough and get that horse's teeth just right. Um, the veterinarian I shadowed with first had a really cool head, like a drill body, and he had different uh, heads he could detach and reattach for different kinds of grinding motions. The mobile veterinarian I was with this summer, she only had a power tool that kind of had like a circular drill at the uh, end, and so but that's all she needed for what she did. Uh, another fun fact is usually the upper teeth have sharper edges on the outside and the bottom teeth have sharper edges on the inside. So that's a nice starting point for floating. Um, step seven is to remove the speculum, scrape tartar, and check, for, check the incisors. So in my personal opinion, this is the most dangerous part because you don't have that speculum anymore to protect your hand or the horse's teeth. So as you can see in the bottom corner, that the person is literally grinding down the incisors to make them all one evil level. And so usually the other per uh, assistant usually holds the upper lip back so that they can see what they're doing. And usually the horse is sedated enough that it keeps its mouth open because it's kind of just jerking its head up to get away and it keeps the mouth open during this process but it, sometimes a horse can chomp down on the tool or the person's hand, which hurts the horse and the person. Uh, step eight, if they're present, you extract the wolf teeth. So you use like a screwdriver looking tool with like a hollow tube on the end and you put it over top of the tooth and you kind of separate it from the gum and it just pops right out. Uh, they usually recommend to have it removed within like a year old. I'm about to show you a video of a five-year-old who was uh, neglected. So she kind of struggled to get that tooth out because usually the younger they are, the easier it is to extract because they're not formed in there. And then step nine is make sure your horse does not eat till it's fully awake. Your horse, horses love to eat, 
so that as soon as you let them go after you're done with the procedure, they're going to go get a snack. But since they're nice and sedated and happy, they could choke. And animals have died that way. Yes. There's no doubt about so that. So supervise yeah. your pets, please. Um, so this is the floating, the entire, the video I'm about to show is the entire procedure of floating horse's teeth. As you can see, he has the full mouth speculum in, um, and he has the rope going over top the pole to keep the horse's head up. So we're gonna go, and this is Dr. Lance Alexander in Richmond, Indiana. And as you can see, he's washing out the mouth because the grass and hay stays in there, not just get in the way. And this is the drill body I was talking about. We've it's, got the sound muted. Yeah, the next video has a farmer who makes it. Maybe I should get a copy of that whole PowerPoint from you and we could put it someplace in case somebody wants to watch him. Stop. <laughs> and now, what if you went to a dentist and they use those tools? You would probably never go back. <laughs> and what's really nice is he has a nice and big equine hospital. He has a stockade to keep the horse nice and safe inside the stockade. So if the horse spooks, it has the two doors keeping it right where it's at. And as you see, he goes back and forth between power tools and the, the manual tools. He's got that light on his forehead and he's working. Yeah, look how far he goes back in. Without that speculum, that would be so dangerous. And then front incisors do wear down unevenly sometimes. And as you can see, it's kind of dangerous. But as you can see, the horse keeps his mouth open because it's like, I don't like this. But at the same time, it can be very dangerous because that horse can just chomp down if it really wants. Okay, so. Yeah, that's good. I'll get that whole thing from you. And so. Our, our next video is extracting a wolf tooth mm -hmm. from a five-year-old. The horse should never be this old when he's getting his wolf tooth extracted. He was just neglected and finally mm -hmm. given to a good home. So um, as you can see, she has that speculum on and then she has her headpiece on. I'm right behind her shoulder. And she's, she really has to wiggle out that tooth because it's really in there. But as you can see, it's kind of like a hollow tube with a screwdriver body. And she just cups it up around the tooth and kind of just wiggles it on out. Ta-da! And that's the tooth that's in that baggie. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any questions? Okay, you ready for questions? That's floating. I mean, it's amazing. If you're not a horse person and you don't, it'd be hard to identify what that term means. Questions, comments? I got one little question. On average, what would that cost per horse? Well, it matters on the veterinarian. Well, right. Uh, so give me a grand average. The horse hospital owner, he only charged 150 because they brought, people brought their horses to his clinic, but the mobile veterinarian I was with charged an additional $75 fee for her gas. Mm -hmm. So it could be anyway over 150 Per horse? Per year. Per horse per year. 